as an imam, a lot of people are constantly asking me, is this halal, is this haram, is this halal, is this haram? And I don't like those sorts of questions, not because I don't like to delve into the books and kind of think about these things, but I think that it speaks to our poor relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we're only concerned with halal and haram, that we're only concerned with doing the bare minimum or doing something that is barely acceptable or might be acceptable, as opposed to just trying to be a better version of ourselves every single day, right? X activity, this sort of thing that you're watching or that sort of thing that you're doing, right? The implication behind the question is that, well, if it's permissible, then I'm going to keep doing. Okay, what if it's permissible, but it would be better to not do it? What if it's permissible, but you, sh you really could be spending your time in a better way? What if it's permissible, but there's an opportunity cost to engaging in this activity as opposed to doing something that's going to develop you more, going to make you more intelligent, it's going to build relationships around you, all these sorts of things. We're kind of stuck. We're kind of stuck in just um, bare subsistence. And then we complain because then we're, oh man, uh, my prayers are so mechanical and I don't feel anything when I recite the Quran and I don't feel, you know, the, the, the Iman boost or the faith. Well, why do you think that is? All of our questions are, is this barely permissible? Can I do this thing? And the understanding is that you want to do this thing. Having a relationship with Allah is a little bit like falling in love because, and there's a reason why there's centuries of poetry kind of like using that sort of metaphor or analogy, because when you're in love, all of your senses, all of your skills, all of your, your talents, they're all geared towards sensing. You don't have, you don't, you shouldn't ask, hey, what do you like? What do you don't like? Your job is to figure it out. And everything that you have is put towards that objective of figuring out what the beloved likes and doesn't like. And you're going to trip over yourself to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to strive to do it before it's even asked, before it's even expected. You want to delight the other, the beloved, in how you anticipate needs and desires and wants and these sorts of things. That's when you're worshiping Allah, when you're in love, when you care enough to actively seek out what it is that Allah is going to love more, what it is that he's not really going to be happy with you doing. And so if our relationship isn't that, if our relationship with Allah is only kind of, well, what's the bare minimum thing that I'm allowed to do, then we don't really have much room to expect uh, to feel the kind of headiness and uh, emotional experience of that relationship that we might hope for.